Rare new strain of meningitis is popping up around the Central Coast. We'll tell you what to watch out for. And find out which Cal Poly student is going to be on a popular game show. And a Cal Poly club you may not know about is climbing its way above the competition. Broadcasting from Studio 300 on Cal Poly's campus, you're watching Mustang News. Hi, I'm Trent Murfield. And I'm Christina Favuzzi. You're watching our weekly half-hour broadcast of Mustang News. Several Greek organizations are under investigation after reports of an offensive Native American-themed party over the weekend. President Armstrong and the Vice President of Student Affairs sent out an email to the Cal Poly community on Tuesday about the event. The university received several complaints about the gathering from community members. Men at the party were dressed in colonial-themed clothing, and women were dressed in what was called sexually explicit Native American clothing. I think it's very, very, very serious. I think it, its effects on our community are things that we can't even fully put our arms around, and that's what makes it very disturbing. The Dean of Students' Office does not plan on releasing the names of the organizations involved until the investigation is over. A rare form of meningitis has started to pop up on the Central Coast. Two students in Santa Barbara have been diagnosed with meningitis type B. Dr. David Harris at Cal Poly says the same strain found at Princeton may be the same one found in Santa Barbara. Symptoms of the rare strain include fever, headache, stiff neck, change in mental activity, and a rash around the legs. It's developing any of those, then they need to go directly to the emergency room, not to the health center, not to call mom, just go straight to the emergency room and get them checked out quickly. There is no readily available vaccination in the United States as of now, but the CDC and the FDA are trying to work on a vaccination that will help fight against the strain. Dr. Harris says to be careful of who you are around and to be safe during the upcoming holiday break. The College of Liberal Arts students could soon see an increase in their college-based fees. Dean Epperson proposed an increase of the fee to President Armstrong, and the increase would raise the fee from the current $162 to $291 per quarter. The fee was presented to the Campus Fee Advisory Committee, and four of the seven voting members on the committee are students, and all four students said they are in support of the increase. The decision to propose a college-based fee increase was based on very careful consideration of, of numerous factors. And the bottom line was that we believe the students in the College of Liberal Arts deserve the very best education that we can provide for them. A vote will be held for CLA students in February on the fee increase. Well, the results are in for the Let Your Voice Be Heard ASI survey. And ASI President Jason Colombini and the Executive Cabinet now have their work cut out for them. Over 4,000 students filled out the 10-question survey, and here's how the numbers shaped up. 60% of students are in favor of an addition of an alcohol-related venue on campus. Just over 68% of students were in favor of skateboarding on campus. And other issues such as advancing Ma Athletic Center was opposed by more than 40% of students who took the survey. For more survey results, check your Cal Poly email or visit mustangnews.net. Enrollment in California's new online insurance marketplace is now underway. David Aguilar took a look at how the Covered California Funded Project is helping spread the word. So um, we are um, basically the boots on the ground. Their mission is simple, to educate students about their options under the new health care bill, more commonly known as Obamacare. The CSU Health Insurance Education Project started with Covered California giving CSU Los Angeles a grant for a little more than $1 million. The basic goal is to spread the word about affordable options in health care um, that are part of the new Affordable Care Act. And program leaders can refer students to enrollment counselors. We've got cards for an enrollment counselor and you can make an appointment with them and they can sit down and go through the application process. A person applying for health insurance under Obamacare will be able to shop for private insurance that covers services in 10 essential health areas. Services from emergency to mental health are now covered on every insurance policy. It's not just help um, making insurance more affordable, but it's actually improving the insurance that people do purchase. And students are not the only ones that will benefit from this project. Um, the other people that we're talking to are um, you know, part-time employees on campus, people who work you know, for the food service or you know, people who work in the library. There's all sorts of people on campus that could benefit from this. David Aguilar, Mustang News. 
A penalty of $95 will be charged to those who do not register for insurance by March 31, 2014. ASI is working to become more transparent to the students with how they spend their money. A new budget plan called OpenGov allows students to see exactly where their student success fee money is going. OpenGov is an online website accessible to anyone. It has charts, graphs, and raw numbers showing how much is being spent on what. Before the program is up and running, the Student Success Fee Allocation Advisory Committee needs to decide if this is something we really need on a campus. Student success fee video, student success fee information that's easily accessible through the Cal Poly website. This is just a way to kind of simplify it a little bit more, make it a little easier to read. So it's cost benefit, is it worth it or not? Now Colin Beanie heard of the idea from Fresno ASI, where they are already using the program. The program could cost anywhere from $1,000 to $1,500. A Cal Poly student is on the TV show Let's Make a Deal Right Now. Freshman Allison Tuso can't give away too many details on her experience, but she is allowed to say that she went on stage and made a deal. Prices, prizes excuse me, range from $50 in cash all the way to a car or a vacation. After watching her mother win $1,000 in cash on the show and her sister win a car, Allison was waiting until her 18th birthday to give it a shot. I would definitely recommend it and I would definitely do it again because it was an awesome experience just being on there and then everyone had so much energy and they had music playing so it was all like fun even if I didn't get picked like it still would have been like a fun experience. You can find out what happened on the show Thursday at 2 p.m. on KCOY Channel 12. A Cal Poly club chops its way to the top. And see what new apps some Cal Poly alumni have created. There are plenty of extracurricular activities to do around campus, but there may be one you might have overlooked. Reporter Denzel Cordeman tells us what fun activity could get you some college credit. The world of timber sports. Few students know that at the north end of campus, students are busy climbing trees, throwing axes, and cutting timber right here at Cal Poly. Uh, we compete in a bunch of different events. Uh, there's about 25 events. We have sawing events with a crosscut saw, chopping events with an axe, axe throwing. We have uh, obstacle course races. We have pole climbing. And it all looks and sounds fun, but at its ground floor, the logging club is a teaching and learning experience for all students that are interested. It's actually a one unit class at Cal Poly. Um, it's uh, Natural Resources 290. And it's a one unit class, um, credit, no credit. Uh, if you show up, pay your dues, um, you'll get credit in the class. The club also competes in tournaments and participates in demonstrations at some campus events. Club president Sam Mulholland enjoys competing in chopping events. We have three competitions a year. We host one at Swanton every fall. Then we go to the Sierra Cascade Logging Conference in Reading every uh, winter. And then in the spring, we have the Association of Western Forestry Clubs Conclave. And how does the team match up against the competition? Last year we took third at um, AWFC, which is against every school um, west of the Mississippi. So, I mean, we're up there. We're pretty competitive. Um, we'll give anyone a run for their money. Denzel Quarterman, Mustang News. And the team competed against Humboldt, Berkeley, and Northern Arizona University at this year's Cal Conclave. The Cal Poly team placed first. Some Cal Poly alumni have created a Hearst Castle app. Mark Pratton, Aaron Rivera, Josh Uwa Holland, and Garrett Larnson came up with the idea for the app when they were visiting Machu Picchu and they were frustrated at the lack of information that was available. The Hearst Castle app provides information for tourists to read at their own leisure, and the app also provides notifications when the user is close to a significant artifact at Hearst Castle. Um, you launch it up again, it activate, activates the GPS, and then it tracks where you're walking around uh, on the outs outside grounds. So as you approach a statue or something that looks uh, important to you or that you want to learn more about, uh, it tells you that you're standing next to it and then just delivers content on the spot. The app is available for download, but it is only compatible with iPhones later than 4S and iPhones with the iOS 7 oh, yeah, software. I'm going to do it from like, the link itself. Cal Poly's media group is collecting cans for those in need this holiday season. 
Mustang Media is hosting a food drive with the Slow Food Bank Coalition on campus now until December 5th. There are six bins located throughout campus for the Cal Poly community to donate canned, non-perishable food items to. The bins are located in the University Union, Campus Market Plaza, Kennedy Library, Dexter Lawn, outside Mott Gym, and in the Business Building. Our local community because in Slow there's about 44,000 of our neighbors as the Slow County puts it, the food bank puts it, of our neighbors that are going hungry. You can also make a monetary donation by visiting the Slow Food Bank's website and for every dollar donated the food bank can provide ten dollars worth of food to those in need. Campus Dining is offering students a classic holiday meal. Reporter Jenna Brown went to Village Market to take a look. Freshly baked pies, turkey, and whipped sweet potatoes. These are a few of the foods Campus Dining is offering this holiday season. Basically, you can build your own meal, or we have some already put together packages that you can purchase, kind of a one-shop stopping type thing. Um, you get turkey, you get choice of sides, gravy, rolls. Um, the sides are two different types of dressing, green bean casserole, uh, cranberry orange relish, which is just phenomenal. There are nine different pie options this year. The most popular are pumpkin and cherry. A new item this year is a gluten-free pumpkin pie. Pies and prepackaged holiday meals are something that students can purchase with their plus dollars. I think it's a great idea because you can like share a Thanksgiving meal with your roommates, you know, and usually you can't because you're away for the holiday. This is the fourth year Campus Dining has offered holiday meals, and every year the options and orders increase. Um, you know, everybody's busy around the holidays, so if they need just a few sides or bring a pie or have a whole meal because they have people coming in and they don't have time, boom, we're the answer. You can order it for us. The last day to order holiday meals and pies is Friday, November 22nd. You can place orders through the Campus Dining website at calpolydining.com. Jenna Brown, Mustang News. Pie and meal orders take about three days to fill, but if you just want side dishes or a slice of pie, visit the deli at Village Market. And coming up next, we'll have your weekend weather. And find out which Cal Poly football program, excuse me, is coming out to finish the season this weekend. Welcome back to CPTV. Well, we've had a bit of rain and sunshine this week. Yeah, and to tell us more about what to expect this weekend, we have Brianna Whitney in the studio. Brianna. Thanks, Trent and Christina. Starting with your weather headlines, pretty obvious for the first one, rain. We've seen sprinkles and showers throughout last night, yesterday, a little bit in the day, and all the way through the night to this morning. All of that is due to a strong northeast flow. But by the end of the weekend, temperatures will go back up to the upper 60s, low 70s. So you'll have a sunny weekend in case you're heading out for some events. But that may not be the case for Thanksgiving. At third and final headline, we might be seeing thunderstorms. So if you're staying here for the holiday, you might want to prepare for a wet turkey day. Let's check out those temperatures across the board. Starting in North County, 57 degrees in Paso Robles, a little bit south in Atascadero, 55, and further out to the coast, 55 in Los Osos, so a little cooler if you're heading out to the beach or Montana de Oro, Los Osos. Here in San Luis Obispo, 61 degrees and pretty much the same as we go down the coast. Arroyo Grande, 61, Napomo, 60, and Santa Maria, 60 degrees. So let's take a look at that five-day forecast. Thursday today, we're going to see a little bit of rains in the morning you may run into some showers so make sure to bring that umbrella if you're heading out on friday partly cloudy a little bit of an increase in temperature 64 degrees saturday 63 degrees still partly cloudy with a low of 43 so if you're planning on going out that night make sure to grab a sweater or a jacket Sunday, the sun's coming back out, 64 degrees, and on Monday, 66 with sun. So if you're planning on doing anything for the rest of the week, plan on mid-temperatures with a little bit of sunshine. But of course, if you're staying for Thanksgiving, make sure to prepare for a wet turkey day. Now, although weather here has been pretty moderate on the Central Coast for this November, that isn't the same story for the Midwest. I take a look at the damage left from those storms earlier this week and speak to one Cal Poly student whose friends and family saw it all firsthand. A tornado warning has been issued until 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the following county. I, mean, I, do, I don't have anything. My whole, it's gone. It was no quiet Sunday on the Midwest. It's on the ground. 
Tornadoes and 145 mile per hour winds tore through Illinois and Michigan, destroying everything in their path. So I heard, I'll go outside and I heard this, like a, it's like a train, a, like a loud train. I said, this isn't right. In Michigan alone, 620,000 homes were left without power as trees fell down, leaving one dead. And Cal Poly freshman Elena Brown received text after text from friends and family describing what they saw. Some of them were kind of scared because some of them were driving home from college for the weekend and they had to pull over because they couldn't see like five feet in front of them. And what we couldn't even begin to imagine happening here in California was all too real just states away. I was talking to my dad and my dad's friend who lived in Illinois, his house that he lived in last year is just completely gone. Newscasts put on hold. We need to go off the air. Yeah. We will be back when we can. Damages now up to $1 billion, leaving residents picking up the pieces of one of the worst storms in the century. It was tearing it apart like it was just a cardboard box. I mean, the, the, the siding was just getting ripped apart. Thousands of miles away from home, Elena is counting her blessings. Yes, very thankful and like very thankful that none of my friends got hurt and none of my family and all of them are okay. A total of six people were killed during these storms, and of course our hearts go out to all those who are affected. But just a good reminder, Christina and Trent, of how lucky we are to live here on the Central Coast. I'll send it back to you guys. Thanks so much, Brianna. Definitely keeping those people in the Midwest in our thoughts. And now to take a turn for sports, we're thankful on the West Coast. We have a little bit better weather than the Midwest right now. Definitely great weather for big things happening this weekend for the Mustangs. Two Cal Poly runners are headed to the NCAA Championships. Chris Frias will represent the boys cross country team and Laura Hollander will represent the girls in Terry Hout, Indiana. Both Frias and Hollander won their races at the Big West Championships here in San Luis Obispo. Then both runners went on to West Regionals where Frias finished 9th and ran the 10K course in 29 minutes and 55 seconds. Hollander finished 7th in the women's race and ran the 6K course in 19 minutes and 37 seconds. The championship races will start at 10.15 a.m. Saturday and will be live streamed on NCAA.com. The women's basketball team opened up their season at home Tuesday night, beating New Mexico State 72-64. Senior Molly Schlemmer paved the way with 28 points and 17 rebounds. Junior Ariana Elegato added 10 points off of her own while dishing out a team-high 7 assists. With the win, the Mustangs improved to 1-3 on the season, heading into their next home game against the University of Nevada tonight at 7 p.m. Cal Poly football is headed to Northern Colorado to finish the 2013 season Saturday. Quarterback Chris Brown will start for the Mustangs against a Northern Colorado team that has lost 10 straight games. Brown came in for Dano Graves in the loss to Eastern Washington last week and led three scoring drives in the fourth quarter. The upcoming game against the Bears will conclude a disappointing season plagued with injuries. The Mustangs fell out of the FCS coaches' top 25 and the sports media network poll earlier this season and will not make the playoffs. This will be the last game for one of the best linebackers to come through the program, Johnny Millard. I sat down with him to reflect on his long career at Cal Poly. Well, you know, all my teammates, they're, they're such great guys. and they, they all have, you know, such great characters and just charisma. And I think people, um, people are like, they want to be a part of that, you know, so... Um, I, on my recruitment trip, I definitely noticed that, so I think that's kind of something that our team has that's maybe a little different than other teams in America. For more on Johnny's full story, including how his father, who was an NFL star, influenced his game, visit mustangnews.net. Cal Poly's rugby team is headed to Nationals this weekend in North Carolina. The Mustangs have gone to the National Tournament for the last three years. The team says they have been putting in extra work to prepare for this weekend's games. Known that would be nationally ranked this year as well. So, I mean, since this summer and last, even the end of last season, we've been preparing, uh, working out, or running a lot, uh, just just getting our fitness up to to be prepared for the national competition. Last year, the Mustangs placed 12th nationally. This year's team is currently ranked 10th out of 24 teams that will be competing. Well, thanks so much, Lisa. I definitely want to check out that Johnny Millard piece online. It looks like a great piece. Yeah, he had a lot to say about the program and his father, who was a big star for the Minnesota Vikings. Wow, very cool. 
Well, that's great to hear. And the hyphy movement is back. And this time, it's in San Luis Obispo. Coming up in Hollywood after the break, we'll tell you why this Oakland legend is in town. Welcome back, Mustangs. And here in the studio, we have Alexis Chikuti to tell you what is happening in San Luis Obispo this weekend. Alexis. Thanks, Trent. One of the Bay Area's hip-hop's biggest names will be performing at Slow Brew tonight. Too Short, his most famous for his hits, Blow the Whistle. And the Ghetto will be taking the stage tonight at 8 o'clock. The rapper is one of the pioneers of West Coast hip-hop and has released 16 albums since 1987. Too Short is from East Oakland and has collaborated with many of the industry's legends such as Tupac, Notorious B.I.G., and Dr. Dre. His song Blow the Whistle came out during the height of the hyphy movement. Tickets are $28 in advance and $30 at the door. San Luis Obispo residents are ready to pig out this weekend at a new event coming to town for the first time. The first Slow Bacon Fest is this Saturday at the Madonna Inn Expo from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. There will be a bacon eating contest and a bacon queen crowned at the event. Tickets are $35 pre-sale and will be $40 at the event if they do not sell out before then. 20 plus restaurants coming. They're making all different kinds of bacon dishes. We've got chocolate dip bacon, bacon cupcakes, bacon wrap shrimp, bacon and honey Brussels sprouts, just pretty much everything that you can imagine with bacon is being done at the Slow Bacon Fest. The event is all-inclusive and will feature some of Slow's favorite eateries, such as Woodstock's Pizza, and people 21 and older can enjoy alcohol and even try some bacon-flavored vodka. Around 500 people are expected to come to the event. For more information, visit slowbaconfest.com. BanFest is happening at Harmon Hall in the Performing Arts Center on Saturday, November 23rd at 8 p.m. The bands that are performing at the concert will include Cal Poly's Wind Orchestra, Wind Ensemble, and Pride of the Pacific Marching Band. Almost 300 students will be performing. The Wind Orchestra will perform Norman Dello's Joys, Scenes from the Louvre, and Alex Shapiro's Paper Cut. The Mustang Band will conclude with the songs they performed at the football games. You can go grab your tickets at the Performing Arts Center. And that's all for this weekend's uh, events in Hollywood. It sounds like it's going to be a fun one, you guys. Yeah, and that bacon fest. Oh my gosh, bacon flavored vodka. I can't even imagine. I don't think that would even taste good. Well, chocolate flavored <laughs> bacon. That's pretty awesome. So I'd look forward to taking that. Well, thanks for watching today's Mustang News. You can tune into our weekly half hour broadcast that's on Charter Channel 19, UHTV Channel 7, and Campus Channel 2. You can also find constant broadcast coverage on mustangnews.net. And we're leaving you here with a two short video.